there is a nation that has no citizens, occupies three acres of territory, issues stamps, coins, and passports, has diplomatic relations with 81 countries, and has been in uninterrupted existence since the 11th century. Its foundation stands on the 900-year history of an order of knights. To their dark age, this order brought a fire of unselfish purpose. Around this fire, they united men of all countries, and by this light, they went together into the unknown. The Sovereign Military and Hospitaller Order of the Knights of St. John, Jerusalem, Rhodes, and Malta. Their name is a roadmap their time in history. Their journey begins in a hostel in Jerusalem between the years of 1023 and 1048. Their purpose was to care for Christian pilgrims in the Holy Land. Under their rector, the Blessed Gerard, the men formed themselves into a brotherhood. They became known as the Hospitallers. Out Reamer was the name of the Holy Land of the Crusades. In 1099, the First Crusade ended with Jerusalem in Christian hands. Brother Gerard spoke to the hearts of his age. He turned a local work of charity into a universal and perennial vision. The Knights of St. John have a history and an organization unique in the world. For nine centuries, this extraordinary regiment of noblemen have exercised an influence on Western civilization out of all proportion to their numbers. The Maltese archipelago and the Knights of Malta are two different countries. The first is a republic. The second is the world's smallest sovereign nation. The Knights have been headquartered in Rome since 1834. Villa Malta, like the Vatican, is not part of Italian territory. His Most Eminent Highness, Fra Andrew Berdy, a Scotsman and descendant of Mary Stuart, has been Grand Master of the Order since 1988. He is the first English Grand Master in the Order's history. As a master for 23 years at a Benedictine school, he comes to his office with a closer knowledge of the religious life than any of his predecessors for many generations. The Sovereign Military Hospital Order of St. John of Jerusalem of Rhodes and of Malta is just about to celebrate its 900 years of existence. And during that time, we hope that we've been able to help the poor and the sick, which is what we were founded for, and is what we're doing today, and what we hope to go on doing, perhaps for another 900 years. I don't know if we'll manage it.
We have at the moment 81 embassies in the world. We're permanent observers at the United Nations and on their ancillary things like the World Health Organization, Food and um, Agricultural Organization. And um, we've got 43 national associations all over the world. We've got six priories, three sub priories, and we are, I hope, a little more than just an ordinary first aid corps. We want to be uh, compassionate. We've had camps uh, for the refugees in Rwanda. We've tried to help the Croatian um, people. We've got somebody helping out in Albania at the moment. All over the world, the fall of the Iron Curtain has increased our work a lot. We have an embassy in Russia and we've got volunteers there setting up uh, bakeries and uh, soup kitchens for the people who need it. In England, where we cooperate with the Venerable Order of St. John, we're running 21 uh, old people's homes together. The Johanniter Orden cooperates with our people in Germany, doing first aid work and looking after the old and the sick and Meals on Wheels and work like that. In Germany alone, we've got a first aid corps of over 30,000 people uh, helping, and we uh, fully run seven hospitals all over Germany. We've got another large first aid corps in Austria, and there's another one in France. We've got a lot of work in, uh, especially in the French, ex-French colonies of West Af Africa, where we help a lot because leprosy is very much of, a, of, uh, of an affliction there, and so we help them. But we are not only in Europe. We have a leprosaria in Senegal, which has been going for 25 years, beautifully run, and uh, they are making uh, great adva uh, advances there in uh, research. We've got another very big one with one of the best libraries in the world on dermatology in Paraguay, for instance. We've got an association in uh, Poland, which is working very well. They've got a place in Warsaw, which is looking after people dying of AIDS. As we do in the United States, we also have a place for, the, uh, for AIDS there. And we have three associations in the United States who do a lot of work. They raise a great deal of money and they are specializing especially in helping the people in Latin America who've been afflicted by civil wars. We've got here in Malta the Fort of San Angelo which we will be using to have meetings of our presidents or religious exercises and we might be able eventually to make it a center where we could store material, medicines, medical equipment, uh, water purifiers, and uh, things like that, for, uh, so as to be ready to help in any case of a disaster within the Mediterranean area. At the moment, we uh, have works in about uh, over a hundred countries. That's hospitals, clinics, uh, leprosaria, um, schools and uh, first aid corps. It's, it's uh, difficult in just a few minutes to uh, tell you about all that we do, but I hope this might give you a slight idea. I always tell our people that it's up to them to see in the faces of the people they help the face of our Lord, because that is their vocation. <laughs> A hospital of vocation has not changed since the 11th century. The knights are still in the business of caring for pilgrims. The only difference being that their charitable work is no longer limited to one area, but is worldwide. Missions of mercy are sent to areas hit by disasters, natural or man-made. The order always answers the need for help. This pilgrimage to the shrine at Tapanu on Gozo is organized annually by the Maltese Association. The order assists the sick and the destitute, just as it has for the past 900 years.
such as our world today, that the services of the order are in constant demand. And the eight-pointed white cross is welcomed worldwide. Volunteers look after the elderly and physically handicapped. Their services are private and voluntary. Within the order, all are bound by a common devotion, a service to mankind. The Knights are still a military order. But today, the enemies they fight are hunger, disease, and misery of all kinds. The unusual achievement of the Knights of St. John is a sleight of hand by which they turn titles and ceremonies into hospitals, ambulances, and services of all kinds. A sleight of hand because its ingredients are fantasy and its product is substance. like the hospital or monks and nuns before them. The order today is totally dedicated to the care and protection of our lords the sick. So who are they? This sovereign military and hospital or order that has changed with the centuries and remains unchanged by them. The idea of a knight dedicated to God and the protection of the weak took hold of men's imaginations. After the conquest of Jerusalem, the Christian kingdom spread out over the Holy Land. Armed defense was now needed to protect pilgrims traveling over dangerous roads. In response to this need, two main orders of Knights grew up. The Knights Templar and the Knights Hospitaller. These military orders started out in a small way. But as the money and recruits poured in from the West, a radical change took place. Many of the noble families were attracted by the ideals of the orders, and soon whole armies of Knights